I think the, the major trends that started in 2023 will continue getting hotter in 2024. And as I said, AI is the big thing. AI is going to be incorporated into everything that we do. And it's going to be used very much so for data analysis, since Home Hope is a very data intensive uh, activity. Welcome back, everybody. I'm going to try and impersonate Scott Scher today. On you can't do it, man. You can't uh, do it. Welcome to one one nine hundred. Suck you, my mix a lot oxygen. Do you know this bo boomer boomer's cap? It's it's um yeah. It's a beautiful cap. Yeah, I'm going for my uh, Avril Lavigne skater boy look today, and so it's a. Uh, it, what we're going for, this is actually from Meow Wolf in, in Las Vegas, for those of you who are unfamiliar. Uh, that's a place we recently went as sort of our, our Christmas celebration at s &H, or holiday celebration, excuse me, for being politically correct, incorrect uh, there for a second. Uh, so today, what we wanted to do is get together and talk a little bit with the crew about um, 2024 predictions. Um, and so in order to kind of frame the conversation, I'm just going to start with a question. 2024, is it the year of prostate injections? I, I, only say, I, I only say this because it's going viral right now on Instagram. So uh, sure. let's we can back things out and just take things a little bit more seriously here on the SNH podcast. Uh, Why? 20, Why? Yeah, we exactly. Don't we don't have to. We don't have uh, to. We, yeah. we can go down the realm of prostate injections if we want. Uh, however, <laughs> this is a uh, a 2024 predictions episode. So similar to other predictions episodes what we want to do is look at 2023 the year that was we've already recorded a podcast on it uh, and take a look and say 2024 what may happen in the realm of health optimization what technologies uh, what tools what studies what events may shape the world of health optimization in 2024 um, so with that I get the pleasure of you know doing the bumps at spike thing because this is the easiest job in the world is to be be the MC for this. I get to bump it up to you guys and say like, hey, what's going to happen? If you're going to take your crystal ball and rather than doing the cop out answer and saying like, hey, I see the future and it's going to be very vague. Uh, let's That's my cop out answer. Yeah, that's that's everybody's cop out answer, right? Let's try and rub that crystal ball a little bit like Wizard of Oz, Kansas City circa 1960 or whenever that came out. Uh, well, and, and let's be predictable. Predict here what's going to happen on that yellow brick road known as 2024. Well, for my first prediction is that something gonna happen to the prostate that has been injected with all sorts of things. I don't know whether it's gonna gonna be good or bad, but something's gonna happen. And, and just for it. reference, these are the things that uh, traditionally we wouldn't think to be injected into a prostate, correct? Um, so the it, yeah, I, I was totally surprised when I saw the video. But anyway, um, the. the I think the, the major trends that started in 2023 will continue getting hotter in 2024. And as I said, AI is the big thing. AI is going to be incorporated into everything that we do, right? Um, so, and it's going to be used um, uh, much, very much so for data analysis, since Home Hope is a very data-driven, um, uh, a very data-intensive uh, activity. Where when I when I started uh, uh, analyzing the metabolome, it would take me five hours to actually make conclusions. Right? Can you imagine if you are able to present this to to uh, uh, your results to uh, particular cases that are that to which your large language model has already been trained. And not only not only that, but uh, to uh, analysis also of, you know, Boomer loves devices and rings and all of those data that are coming from those can also be analyzed, uh, um, uh, you know, intelligently by by AI. And the other thing is that uh, basically the also the arrival of the, the devices that are natively, including your phones, by the way, uh, that are natively um, uh, driven uh, by AI, you know, uh, NVIDIA, the chip maker, uh, has, has already been looking at phones uh, to be, you know, the 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 next device where they're going to uh, put in their, 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 their AI chips, right? So that's what's uh, going to happen. So it's going to make 
life either more complex or simpler for you depending on how you use the technology right um the the other thing that uh you know i i know that the, the whole the whole data analysis thing that's a, that's a huge area uh, uh that's uh, going to be driven by ai uh you know the detection of patterns and so on you know and when you look at it not from a health perspective but from an illness perspective we could now see how much of this data can be used to, for example, uh, analyze like the epigenetic data, right? Um, and make predictions from that. Can and can analyze, you know, cancer data. Uh, uh, but for me, the exciting part will be there will be an increased analysis of your nutrient data, your nutrition vis-a-vis vis -vis your health, right? What, what are, you know, your nutrition uh, and the metabolites that it produces and then your health correlation. So that the, the idea of precision medicine, which we are uh, actually practicing because all of our, our protocols are, you know, uh, for each person, you know, it's like it's not a one size fits all thing. You could see that there will be this uh, a lot more of the precision medicine going on, right? Uh, the other thing is that uh, the big trend that started in, in uh, a while back, but also got so hot in 2023, will be hotter in 2024. Um, uh, as I said, the microbiota was uh, one that was uh, a big trend. Then you could see that the microbiota will benefit from. Um, uh, you know, the, in, in genetics, they have uh, what's called GWAS, right? Uh, Genome-wide uh, uh, analytical studies. And those can actually be uh, done a lot better than uh, 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 by by uh, artificial intelligence systems, right? Um, and from there, we can come up with various types of, in fact, genome-based therapy, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, microbiome-based therapies for various types of uh, of um, uh uh, diseases, right? Even if you're not disease based, that's why in health optimization medicine, we're really co more concerned with with actually keeping your your microbiota healthy. Uh, because right now we know we at least we're beginning to see what the healthy patterns of microbiota are, and the big difficulty that illness medicine has with these types of um, uh, uh, analysis is that they're looking for the disease patterns right away, right? And they still don't know what the healthy patterns are. So I think that the step that needs to get done in 2024 and 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 and, uh, uh, and onwards is that what are the healthy patterns of this microbiota, right? And then and then from when these healthy patterns are disrupted or the healthy networks, right, uh, or ecosystems of microbiota are disrupted, what's going to happen? A, a, a big area uh, within the microbiota system uh, is actually an area that I am um, avidly interested in is the um, the enteric microbiota gut brain tripartite system, right? On how you know the uh, microbiota in your gut is communicating with your brain, and how your brain cells is actually communicating with your gut. We're seeing more and more communication uh, between them. You know, uh, uh, they're acting as uh, independent entities on their own. And I am sure that in 2024 there will be much more, uh, many more revelations uh, on on uh, how the the tripartite system actually works and can be made to cooperate or coordinate to your health and be able to actually guide your your sleep the other thing that microbiota do is that uh, for 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 next years i think there's also a huge um uh, uh, uh studies underway now to see you know what microbiota actually affect your your chronobiology or your circadian rhythm right uh and uh one of the big things that came out this tw in 2023 is you know hey you should actually give your medications at a particular time of day because a you know the body is actually more receptive to it and b the microbiota are actually more receptive to it and i always been saying that the acupuncturists had it had uh, had known this for a long time you know when they 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 know when their a different triple warmer is active and so on and so forth but now we're actually finding it in science and there will be more of this so because microbiota is involved in everything else right uh in, in the in the generation of your metabolites, you're right. Uh, when when you, you you digest your food and they they actually pre-process your food in your circadian rhythm, in your um, uh, in the, the in the processing of your toxins and your exposome, you know how how the the expos exposome uh, and uh, and uh, microbiota interaction is going to be. So I think we've only um, 
we've just opened uh, uh, a big avenue. You know, we've been opening it for the past few years, but this, uh, I think in 2024, we'll be seeing, um, you know, the microbiota actually uh, bleed into all of the different pillars of the health optimization uh, medicine in ways that we really actually didn't uh, uh, envision it, right? And and AI, uh, as as uh, as I said, will will basically drive a lot of the not only the studies but a lot of the energy that it will be used in order to keep you in great health and actually, uh, you know, um, uh, alleviate diseases or cure diseases, right? And um, and uh, let the if you think a little bit more uh, on AI, and because we're only thinking about our human health, you know. We're thinking of sending people to Mars, for example, or we're sending people out to space for longer periods of time. If, if you could see that the power of AI to actually determine what patterns we have, you know, uh, in terms of that, that will allow us for um, will allow us uh, to be able to uh, to travel uh, for long periods of time in space. So. Uh, so with 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 the advent of this technology that that we have to us, it actually opens up uh, again my use of the word humankind, you know, to to various types of possibilities that were not uh, available to us before because we did not have the capacity to analyze the data that we have. Or we we do have data, right? Um, uh, it, it's just that we do not have the capacity to uh, actually analyze them until now, and it's only going to get better. Uh, even in evolutionary medicine, which you know we're you know people are quiet about, they think that there is no nothing more to advance. There actually no. Um, you know the the microbiota actually evolved. You know they have an evolutionary dance uh, with the body, our microbiota, right? Uh, we, you know, from the discovery of the prokaryote eukaryote communication in 2013, right, uh, to now, it's like uh, how 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 does uh, the microbiota content actually predispose someone to disease? Right, uh, so which is in, within the preview of evolutionary medicine, or uh, for example, how do, how autoimmune systems actually are are built into our uh, in, into our systems, right, as a way of defending ourselves from other diseases, how we are uh, um, how we are adapted to infectious diseases, right. So it's it, even in things that we don't think about, right. We were thinking about epigenetics, we're thinking about oh mitochondria and my and you know and, and even mitochondria diseases you know we're, we're thinking about um metabolomics itself exposomics you know microbiology but yeah there's also something to be said about evolutionary medicine so we have a better understanding of ourselves uh, aside from what jody said you know we, we also understand ourselves a little bit better by the way we interact with what seems to be like a spoiled brat sometimes when they create large language models all right. So at, at the risk of potentially like starting off on a tangential conversation, I'm going to say a, a two word phrase that I think we're going to park for a separate conversation because there's been some advances also in quantum computing. Right. And so uh, what, you know, Ted, perhaps we'll park this for a separate conversation about the impacts of quantum computing on all of these potential discoveries, because um well, between quantum computing and large language models, I think there's a lot that can be answered very, very quickly. Um, so 2024, uh, coming back to this, I, I, again, I get the pleasure of volume. Just like to say questions. something uh -oh, funny. Uh -oh. <laughs> right. uh, number one, f first is, you know, uh, first is just a serious question for people. It's like, please have a definition for the term quantum before oh, you yeah. use it and open your mouth with it. Right? I knew you were going to go there. <laughs> Definitions always. Uh-oh, we got to guess. And, 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 and the second is, uh, you know, uh, quantum computing, uh, it, this is just uh, a funny thing that I say all the time, it gives you an answer that sounds like this. I'm giving you a definite maybe. So that's that's uh, uh, the quantum computing for you in, in a nutshell. Anyway, Boomer, please take it away. Well, I was more looking at how quickly you can calculate something, but that, that's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll park this for later. Uh, 2024 is also an election year in the United States and whether or not we like it or not, uh, whether or not we like it or not, yeah. Uh, it's a country that does drive a lot of trends, particularly economically um, and as well as in health. And so one of the, the trends that came out of our 2023 discussion was the idea of psychedelic assisted therapy. In 2024, 
is it going to be the year that the FDA approves MDMA for uh, therapy, particularly as it relates to uh, PTSD? Wow, I didn't expect silence on that question. Wow. Yeah, well, I would like to say yes, but I have no metric on that. <laughs> but I would, you know, if Australia has has done this so far, then well, watch out, America. You know, where where are you? Like, come on, Yeah. we can't be the parts here. <laughs> Oh, you mean we're going to watch the beneficial side effects of Australians first, right? What it's, what it's going to do to the Australian culture. They'll be a lot more loving and uh, and so on. So, um, you know, uh, then maybe then, then maybe America being an imperialist, you know, militaristic country will say, no, we don't want any of that fucking thing. Anyway, I'm, I'm kidding. It is it's highly effective for PTSD. It's been fast tracked by the FDA. So I think 2024 is going to be the year for MDMA. Um, uh, the year for MDMA oral. Um, but I don't think the injectable is going to come anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. No. So no, nobody is doing prostate injections with MDMA at this moment. So, uh, <laughs> Not yet. Until you just said it online for yeah. everybody to understand that that's even a potential. Yeah. Don't, it's I, not a possibility. Ladies please, and gentlemen, please go speak to your physician beforehand. I am not a medical doctor. Don't blow one on the internet. Uh, go, you know, go talk to your lawyer as well. All right. Uh, so you've heard it here first or not first, but, uh, 2024, the year of MDMA psychedelic assisted therapy. Uh, let me perhaps follow that with a, a follow-up question. After MDMA theoretically gets descheduled or rescheduled, uh, which is probably more the latter, where do we go from there? You've seen uh, a few movements within the United States around decriminalized nature. We can talk a little bit about the potential issues with that uh, and around the world, really. But uh, where do we go from MDMA being approved? Uh, already, people are using ketamine, for instance, for treatment-resistant depression. Uh, what What's next on that uh, that topic to fall? Mm. Well, I'd just like to interject here really quickly before Ted takes us down the journey. But with Susan, when I was speaking with her on the podcast, you know, a lot of it is set and setting with with psilocin, but psilocybin, but also with MDMA will be very important. So I think it's the the pre, the the during, and the post care that's really going to to make this um, or break this. So I think that for me is really important in to see how that is going to be uh, and and how it's been designed. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the thing about uh, this is a very good point, Jody, is like the training behind this, right? Because you know, for those of us, and I'll throw my hand up here, who have experienced psychedelic assisted therapy, the the training of that therapist can have a multiplier effect that otherwise may or may not have been there. Um, certainly, the substances themselves can be useful, but if you're sitting in a set and setting that is candidly fucking horrendous, um, that may have adverse outcomes. So I, I am interested in how the training gets implemented. Of course, how we supply these molecules across the world uh, is also of interest to me. But uh, Ted, I'm going to volley it over to you uh, to talk about, you know, what how we see this rolling out, but also, you know, either hurdles or potential other molecules that you might see come out soon after MDMA. Um. You know, um, I, I just like to say briefly, I actually love uh, Rick Doblin's slogan, right, about MDMA. He says, trauma free by 2070. And, uh, you know, that's some fantastic, uh, catchy slogan. Um, it actually, if, if we just go just a little bit historically here, a lot of the molecules that are already uh, being used in therapy before or... Um, Uh, were not actually uh, scheduled, right? Just get swept by by Nixon uh, under the uh, under under that act, and uh, was never never reviewed again, right? Uh, it never got reviewed again, and then the people got brainwashed and the just say no fuck movement, and uh, you know, and, and and so on, which was really political and not scientific, and that has been the point uh, of maps this whole time, right? Those are political decisions that are those are actually not scientific decisions, but the real problem that we have is that we actually have no more drugs to give for many of the mental conditions that we have. So 
why don't we go back and review what we have politically just stashed in there and not review ever again, right? And that's actually, that attitude was a long time. I mean, Rick Dublin's been working on this since 1980s and mid 80s, right? So it's it's a, a long, a long um, time to be able to undo, you know, something that's been political, something where at least two generations have been affected. You know, I, I can't imagine uh, like kids right now who are not even willing to try, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, one psychedelic or the other because they they just lump all psychedelics as bad. You, you know, just, or... you just, you were listening in on my family conversations at Thanksgiving, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> or they just lump all, all, all psychedelics as addicting. I said, yeah. my fucking God, I, you know, uh, DMT is addicting. You must be out of your mind. Right? Yeah. I mean, but, David uh... <laughs> Nutt kind of disproved this a while ago, right? <laughs> so... Uh, but, but the one thing that, that they're doing uh, that's actually very, very interesting was the DMTX experiments that they're doing in, in, in uh, the UK, right? Were they able to hold you in that uh, uh, in that uh, DMT uh, space, right? For hours Ooh. at a time. Uh, and it's, it's you know, it's something that could not be done before. And remember, you know, um, um, uh, we are now, uh, we are now really, you know, a lot of this is actually reviewing what these things do because we've totally run out of things to give right um you know even uh when i was talking with uh carl friston he was actually delighted that i was working with um uh GABAergic systems and he said you know that may be the key molecule that we're missing to look at in schizophrenia for example you know so uh, so, so for me in terms of um uh you know, although we're in the health optimization space, what's going to drive more of the studies of these molecules will be the need for them in clinical and medical settings, right? Um, as as I, I, I really cherish what, of, what one of my psychiatrist friends uh, said to me uh, when he asked me to help take out, uh, you know, his patients off the uh, antidepressants. He said, Ted, we're actually so good at giving this to our patients, but we never know when to take them out. And exactly, we do not know when to take them out, right? Mm -hmm. And the truth is, they actually get offended if you begin taking them out, right? And giving them a little bit more of the natural substances that can actually help them or balancing their bodies. Like, for example, I, you know, I do, when I do hormone balancing, I, I get a 40 year old who is very angry and he's already on, on like a couple of antidepressants. And yet on three months of hormone balancing, I mean, not just the saucer, but hormone balancing, he's back to his old self. I mean, that's, part of growing old man your your hormone levels drop down and and uh, you know it, it's like our solution immediately is to to treat what's going on inside us as pathology instead of a natural process that actually happens to us and we can shore up these things so as uh, when you said you know what's diff you know what's different in the in the criminal the, the criminalized nature and so on that's a really a very slippery slope right because we are nature and we are we are in it and one of the things that the United States has done really badly uh, for this one is that it treats its entire population as if we're all elite athletes, right? They actually just banned all of these drugs and, and substances, et cetera, et cetera, as if we were all competing in, you know, in the Olympics or that we were Barry Bonds or Marion Jones and all of these other people that were not, right? And and so it, it, it's actually quite funny that for like the 0. 0.00 something percent of the U.S. population, this group of substances are banned. That's fucked up. <laughs> It's like seriously, um, and, and so um, in Australia, it's worse, I believe, right, Jody? Like you guys yeah, can't even get you, you guys can't even get CBD. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I we <laughs> right. Look, we have natural. We have an endocannabinoid system in our system, in our system, which means that we respond to exogenous administration of these things, right? Well, of course, we have opiate um, um, receptors in our system, and that's uh, uh, gotten uh, one into one of the things um, that I actually want to bring up here <laughs> is that Kentucky. So Kentucky is not the first state that I think of when I think of psychedelics. It has a forty-two million dollar grant, which is sort of an odd number for ibogaine therapy and its relation to opiate use disorder. So I, I was 
like I was pleasantly surprised also kind of sending around to my family being like, Hey, look, even Kentucky is looking into these things. Um, so I am excited going back to decriminalize nature. Does anybody want to make the point on peyote? I guess the, my positive view of decriminalized yes. nature is it's sort of a way that politicians and uh, the general public can start to understand these and it's a way to pass them through faster. But the flip side of that, I mean, everything inherently has a cost is it's something like peyote. So uh, just mm -hmm. going on the decriminalized nature point, does anyone want to jump into the peyote cactus and how that might get affected here? That was actually a big issue here in DC because we have a uh, you know one of the first decriminalized nature movements has actually passed uh, all these things and we want to pass them hook, line and sinker. Right. However, uh, uh, they had to make an exception for the peyote uh, uh, producing peyote caring tribes who actually use peyote as a part of their um, uh, rituals and uh, part of their care and, and so on, uh, and because it was being poached. Right. And that actually, you know, although I agree uh, that they should be protected, I think that exception will just breed other exceptions and it's going to be a slippery slope from down there. It's like, uh, it, it, for me, it's just like what Dennis McKenna said, you know, all of us have DMT in our systems, we should all be hauled to jail. So, you know, we all, you know, we all have testosterone, all of these hormones and so we're nature, right? We're nature. And for me, anything that's natural uh, that occurs in you, you know, you know, there's there's no point in actually banning these things, right? Uh, it's the synthetic parts that are not uh, that that are not uh, bioidentical that are not identical. You know, are the ones that actually merit cl closer scrutiny, right? Uh, and look, you know, we have a fucking lopsided view or or value of these things. It's like, yeah, you know, if you know, we have alcohol that's legal and kills so many people every year, not just by drunk driving, but by cirrhosis and other stuff. You have um, you have uh, refined carbohydrates, right, <laughs> that cause diabetes every year. Ban those instead. I mean, seriously, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And, and it's like it's like Absolutely. you know you the 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 decriminalized nature movement I think should be true to to the spirit of decriminalized nature. I know I'm going to be hated by many people for this because I'm politically incorrect. But when you make one exception, that's it. You know, yeah. uh, it basically opens everything up else up for another exception. I, I mean, hell, you know, you can make synthetic fucking mescaline. You know, so. You know, instead of doing a poaching, et cetera, et cetera, why don't you just synthetic make synthetic masculine available? It's the same structure, same thing, that's the same thing, you know, uh, rather than making them steal the peyote here. You know, here's synthetic masculine. You know, there's no difference. But but anyway, uh, that's just my point of view. I guess you're also, of course, after the ritual of giving the, the peyote and, and so on and so forth. You know, I... I've had the ritual. It's beautiful, but I have a scientific mind and a, and a, and, a, and a pharmacologist mind. It's like, no, I just want the active ingredient here. I don't like all of these other. It's beautiful, beautiful ceremonies, but you know, I it, I don't need the ceremony to get to get what I need out of it, right? Yeah. So um, so 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 that's the um, I I think that that's um, my point of view in terms of the decriminalized nature and was we need to think really very clearly on how we want to proceed about this, especially twenty twenty four when all the other like MDMA is synthetic, right? Um, LSD is synthetic, so so we we should think we should think about uh, these other things that are natural and where we actually want to bring them. Yeah, and I think um, LSD, MDMA, ibogaine even get lumped into the to be research further category um, when you start to have the decriminalized nature. Uh, conversation. Now, I, I want to just uh, call somebody out here because I know. She has to run here in a little bit, but um, Jody, look, 2024, it might seem like a long way away. It's only, what, seven, eight days, depending on what time zone you're in. Uh, but what does 2024 look like for, for Jody Duvall? What are you excited about? What scares you? All of those fun things. What are your predictions? Mm. Well, I want to bring it back to health, optimize, health optimization medicine practice because because for me, um, it's been a previous, this 2023 has been a big year of, of seeing multiple people come on board. So it's been a pretty big practice year for me in Home Hope. And I've had, you know, six people, families being all tested. So I think 
you know, I feel like I'm getting my groove with this and I feel like people are getting their groove with this. And how, they... how Jody got a groove back. Here we go. This is yeah. the title of the episode. All right, here we go. <laughs> But I feel that 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 um, is spreading very fast because people are realizing that this beautiful dashboard that we can um, create and the personalization around things that we never knew that we um, could test and now that we know and there is a set timeline guideline and then people are seeing results. You know, I'm I'm hearing the majority of people saying that that they have never felt better in their life. So that is the key key thing to to give people that that feeling of of wellness, of health, of vitality, and they have that to go forth in in the years to come to know where to come back to if they lose their way again. So I feel that next year is going to be a massive year for uh, people realizing that this is the thing to do. The prevention, so the prevention space is going to grow because already I've seen it come this year that people are well there is no other options now they're not finding other options in in healthcare um and now it's you know now it's true healthcare and and that's where health optimization comes in and not to completely blow our horn we're meant to be doing this but this is like I see this this is this is coming this is coming hard and fast it's it's arriving arriving yes it's arriving. My, uh, well, never mind. I'll, I'll hold on the joke there. Um, well said, joke. No, <laughs> the, joke, the, the joke is easy to say. We're tantric. We don't yeah, come to arrive. <laughs> That's on my holiday book list. Lots of tantra books. So. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Hol- holiday book. We went We went there. Uh, we should have a separate episode on 2023 book list. <laughs> holiday book list. Okay. Yeah. I have there a book on the history of New Zealand here, and you're reading books about tantra. I mean, that's... Uh, a whole nother land world. All right. Uh, very, very cool. Yeah, I, I agree. With, I love how you put it, Jody. You know, the uh, the arrival of this database dashboard, uh, it, it's, you know, for some of us, we've been using it for a very long time. Um, it, for me as an early finance person, I've called it benchmarking most of my life. But, uh, you know, for the rest of the world, we're getting introduced to this. It's a great time for people to realize that, you um, that you know health is, is a long-term project and it, it's both a preventative and proactive uh, participation on somebody's part and you know there are few places in the world where you can get that right now you are reading a book about new zealand you well, liar. I, I, so, I thought, so, you were, I, thought yeah. I thought you were you were you said you were reading me you were reading the heart the heart drops of the dharmakaya uh, I, as Come you on. know ted i can't do one thing uh uh, I can't read one book at a time. I have right here. I went to a, a bookstore today, uh, a market here in New Zealand and said, can you give me a book on New Zealand that explains life before the white people arrived? Right. Uh, and this was um, sort of a process that I had after going to a museum here. And it was presented as such that nothing happened in New Zealand prior to um, colonization. And so. Well, oh, that's uh, the story of United States. Too. Yeah, basically. Right. Like, welcome to Thanksgiving. Uh, but it's just uh, it's, it, it is a tome. And so I look forward to digging into it in between different passages from Heart Drops of Dharmakaya or uh, a multitude of other books that may or may not be related to tantric practice. Um, but anyway, um, going back to Jody's book, Elmo practice. Yeah, it's a theme. Yeah, it's yeah. a theme. There we go. It's a variation um, on a theme, as we say. And so, so the uh, the person with the OnlyFans type voice has been very quiet uh, over the course of this episode, which is uh, frankly rare. In fact, um, for you to be quiet like this, I was slightly concerned. Um, it's blood you, sugar are, is up. Yeah, I was actually concerned. Are you okay? Uh, so, Doctor Sure no, is... here, um, I have to ask: um, are, are you okay? Are your vital signs all right? No, everything's good over here. There's just a lot of extraneous activity that's happening behind the camera, and it's a Friday night here, right before the Christmas holiday. So, I think other people, people listening, can understand. But no, I'm good. It's been nice to hear predictions, and it's always great to hear Ted, the futurist talk about these things because he's been talking about AI since the 1980s and and anti-aging and reversing of of biological markers and all these kinds of things since the early 2000s. So a lot of these things are finally coming to fruition at a rapid, rapid pace. So I always like listening to see, to hear what 
Dr. Ted has in store for the rest of us, what we're going to look forward to. Maybe you're synesthesia now, synesthesia, right? So you're listening to Indeed. see. Yeah. I'm listening to see. I, I am on drugs. That's true. I um, I did take something before the podcast. I don't know what it was. It was one of, one of the things <laughs> in my refrigerator that was unmarked. So <laughs> yeah, and it's called berberine. Hey, that's, not, that's, not, that's, not, that's not my... That's not my fault, okay? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I just thought it, I thought it was berberine to bring the blood sugar down, but that's okay. Yeah, I never actually got the cake. It's sad, but you know, that's mm -hmm. okay. They, they left before they got cake. So no cake tonight for me. I'll, I think I'll be all right. But um, but yeah, for my my 2020-24, it's there's I have a lot of things that have been on my mind as you guys have been talking and I've been listening mostly unless I've been distracted by children. But one of the things that Jody, you were mentioning, I think I want to kind of dovetail on your practice growing and, and kind of find, finding your groove. And I got to feel similarly here in, in Colorado where I'm at and, and how I'm really ready to kind of take the practice to that next level and continue to grow it. And I, I was just looking at some st statistics earlier this week and how many people are actually leaving medical practice from the physician side of things. Um, it's much more difficult to be a doctor these days within the system, especially if you're a primary care doctor, if you are a a family medicine doctor, internal medicine physician, pediatrician, if you're on that wellness side of, or like the first, you know, the first side of the preventative side that you'd see in the conventional model, those jobs are being replaced by um, physician, physician extenders, like nurse practitioners, physician assistants, even nurses now. And so doctors are looking for things to do and are getting, you know, stuck in these bubbles of the 15 minute visits, which I'm going on forever, but just been getting worse. So I think there's going to be more and more interest, especially after COVID and just the huge surge that we felt as a community here in the health optimization world, that people are looking for alternatives, both as patients and also as doctors, like, well, shit, I got to keep myself healthy through this pandemic. I've, I'm obese. I'm not checking my blood pressure. I'm not getting any exercise. And, and so I've had a lot of doctors reach out to me over the last six months or a year and say, looking for alternatives. And I spoke to one just earlier today, he's an obesity medicine doc at Harvard. And he's like, I'm looking for something else to do. I just don't, I don't want to just do obesity anymore and just work with you know, these drugs of the world, which are great. And they can be really helpful. We forgot but... to talk about Ozampic in the 2023. Yeah, that was, oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, I mean, that yeah, that's in, yeah, that was thinking about that for 2024, at least to continue to, yeah. to that's going to continue to be a, a trend as we see here. But so I think we're going to have more and more people that are going to be interested in looking for alternatives outside the conventional health space, looking for true preventative health and we all know that the system is broken. I mean, I'm still in the system part of the time and I know how broken it is. If you have a trauma, it's good at that. If you have an acute issue, we're pretty good at that, but it's, it's a meat grinder. We just, we just churn people in and out and we don't do much else for them. So I think you can see much more interest growing and growing in the work that we're doing. And as the nonprofit is growing and we're training more people and we have more of these cohort groups where we have groups of people that are training in our program on a regular basis with the faculty, the uh, the people that are here on this conversation and others going through the modules of the health optimization practice, essential certification, we're just going to be starting and continuing, I think, exponentially this wave of health optimization, because mm. I think that's really where things are going. And Ted, again, the futurist starting this back in 2009, and it, things a little bit took a little while to get rolling, but I think we incorporated the nonprofit in 2017, but really, I think the year of home hope is really going to be 2024. We're going to see that inflection point for a lot of things. So I think that's one of the major things that I see happen in 2024. Uh, if you guys want to comment, I can also go on some other things that I have ideas for 2024 otherwise too. No, keep going. Keep going. I want to keep the the rolling stone rolling. Yeah. So I think there's also, there's been a lot of emphasis the last couple of years but on God longevity. There, but God, there no moss. Yes. Uh, no I, I don't know why I reference. I actually do because I just bought Rolling Stone tickets. But anyway. Yeah. Um, nice. Keep nice. Going. With your mom, right? Yeah. Mom, dad. Go with we're, mom. All, we're all, we're all going to go hang out and watch Keith Richards nice. do his thing. Just making Keith. Yeah. Sorry, he, Boomer. I, I I just couldn't resist. Um, you know, yeah. I, I, for, for, for people who don't know the expression, a Rolling Stone gathers no moss. But anyway. Yeah, um, you went you went highbrow with it. I went sort of middle of the road. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but I could I could dovetail this and talk about the ultimate biohacker, Keith Richards. Right, he was the first guy that was going <laughs> to Switzerland back in the 1970s and getting his blood cleaned. He slept upside his... down for a couple of years, right? And that was yeah, the all these crazy why. things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. None of it. We not none, we're not really sure if any of it is true, but I think partially some of it has to be because he's still fucking alive and some. I, I I I got to resurrect vampirism, Scott. I tell you. <laughs> There you go. All other types of vampirism or, or isms or whatever it's called. Yeah. But anyway, so I think there's going to be a huge continued 
emphasis on longevity. And we talked about Brian Johnson for 2023. And I think we're going to see seeing more of this kind of trickling down to the regular folk that want to have additional things in, involved in their life with their focus on longevity. I mean, we certainly see a huge trend in 2023 and, and also going to be in 2024. People aren't drinking alcohol as much, thank God, because there's alternatives and we know how terrible alcohol is for us now. So people are looking at I have place. I have friends that have these places called social wellness clubs, where you go and you hang out with your friends, but you don't drink alcohol. You have adaptogen cocktails and meditate and do sound baths, and it's all very LA. But this is extending outside of just no, LA. It's not too, just so. LA anymore. It, it's I know, it's, I know. It's, it's older. Yeah, it's right, it's actually at Scott's house. That's what's going on right now. <laughs> don't they make fun of those in the movies already? And there was like one movie I saw where, where you know, instead of like doing all of these things to their skin, men are now going to sleep and they're like washing their faces and applying all those <laughs> face lotions and, and putting a red light mask on. And, and yeah, wearing, wearing I actually, face masks. I actually, and... It's funny. I should have done this podcast episode with a red light mask on because I have one right behind Do you me. have one? Um, yeah, of course. No, um, I, yeah. Of course you do. Yeah, of course. Of course. Awesome. So, but we also are going to to do a sound bath and all of the sort of gong thing after this too. So yes, a drum circle, those, those never get old as well. So yeah, yeah for sure. And then two more things that I, I was thinking about as you guys were talking, one is a study on methylene blue for Alzheimer's. So that's coming out. Hopefully we'll get some reports of preliminary results and information in 2024. Very excited about that for low dose methylene blue for cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's. This is based on a study that was done a couple of years ago, looking at multiple different levels or dosages of methylene blue, where 16 milligrams a day was actually the placebo group versus 150 and 250 milligrams a day. And the 16 milligrams a day did much, much better overall in cognitive scoring. So very excited for that. And then finally, it would be, and you mentioned this also, Ted, but just to emphasize, I think 2024 is going to be the year of the forgotten neurotransmitter, GABA. Boom. Everybody, yeah, so dopamine and serotonin, they were 2023, 2022, whatever, Facebook, Instagram, all that, whatever. Now we have GABA turning the brakes on and 2024 is all going to be about slowing the fuck down and understanding that GABA is the key. You know, uh, you said use the term the fuck down, and I now know quite a few people <laughs> who actually use a quarter of trocom, uh, which is a uh, is a uh, gabaergic, as you know. Uh, it's a uh, uh, you, you guys know that that prescriptions is a company that's the major donor to health optimization medicine and practice, and uh, you know. I, I had intended uh, Trocom really to just use the same receptors as the benzodiazepines do, but in a natural way, right? And then um, I, I, a friend of mine just uh, uh, told me that, you know, for performance anxiety, he actually takes a fourth of it. I mean, he's of the age where he doesn't, he shouldn't have any of uh, any problems or any issues, right? But he said that a fourth of it and I'm fine. And now there's about five of them who is actually said, shit, that thing works for performance anxiety. I said, we get well, that's, all the time. well that, that's, that's not what I made it for, but hey, if it, it works for you that way, fine. I said, uh, I think that where you should use this for is where the United States economy is going next year. Um, oh, and, that's, and that's kind of that, like, now we're starting to get on my type of 2024 predictions. Here we go. Yes. Yeah, over to Boomer. Yes. Yeah, and uh, then and then now we're going to Boomer because that was my uh, yeah. my uh... yeah. I, I don't want to be Debbie Downer here, but uh, in the year that <laughs> uh, Charlie Munger passed away, I think I have to give a shout out to my high school yearbook, which my senior year quote was from Warren Buffett, and it's only when the tide goes out that you know who's been swimming naked. Uh, and so, uh, you know, with that in mind, I, I do think there are some interesting forces uh, in the mix right now that could potentially cause uh, disruptions to global economies, which I, I we haven't as a society seen what this will actually do to a longevity health optimization driven market. And so mm -hmm. with that being said, um, you know, it's at those moments that you figure out who are the best are because there's ultimately a flight to quality in terms of both products. Uh, you know, the the products that you use, uh, you're going to spend only on the ones that you know that work. Um, you're going to spend money on the behavior changes, the the practitioners that really drive results. And so, in a world that is potentially changing very rapidly um, and may or may not be positive way. 
um, you may see, it, it will be very interesting for me to see how this, this particular sector, and that sector being health optimization, longevity, whatever you want to call it, responds. And I think for those that are concerned, um, it, it's a time to upskill, right? And to really uh, increase your your capacity, both as practitioner or as um, as a client or, or patient, and really to understand a little bit more as to uh, how to be the best practitioner possible. Uh, it often uh, it, it allows you to kind of gravitate towards those frameworks, which uh, do withstand the test of time. And so those frameworks to me, uh, as we kind of touch on trends that are going forward for the next several decades, are things like uh, artificial intelligence, data science, uh, these omic structures and so as uh, you know the world potentially enters a, a period of economic uncertainty which may lead to different behavior changes to uh, how we look at health uh, a lot of these practitioners who have been uh, providing not just practitioners but influencers who have been providing sort of surf uh, chauffeur level knowledge might fade away because all of us who are really paying attention to where our dollars are going are going to allocate those dollars uh, towards people that are high quality, who are able to deliver the behavior change, the health solution that you want, and the products that are really going to work. Uh, so I don't want to end this on a Debbie Downer note because I think it's, it's good for anybody listening to this to know that um, – you know, just by educating yourself, you put yourself in a position to uh, have a little bit of a swimsuit on rather than being caught naked when the tide goes out. So shout out to Charlie Munger. He's um, done a lot for me and sort of how I look at the world and, you know, rest in peace to him. But uh, yeah, I can toss it back to you guys so we can wrap things up here on the 2024 predictions. Well, I just like to uh, put in uh, the silver lining if you're one who is uh, has enough optimism to put silver linings and look for silver linings. We're not talking about right? silver linings playbooks here, right? We're talking no, uh, not that one. Yeah. Um, the uh, is that uh, as Boomer already mentioned is to educate yourself, and I hope whatever happens uh, in 2024. You know, if it's going to be a, a difficult economy or not, what we need to do is to use this, um, uh, to use whatever happens as uh, motivators that drive us to learn more about ourselves. And in particular, I think what's going to happen next year, if the health dollars are going to be um, uh, contracting, I think what uh, what we need to do is to educate ourselves at how what we eat influences our health how where we live and what we surround ourselves with the light the water that we drink you know the food that we eat these are the kinds of things that have a direct impact on our lives right and and uh, most of all uh the relationships that we have with not just other people but with things that we have uh with the events that we attend and so on right uh so those i i hope would be educational touch points for all of us uh whether or not the health dollars are increasing for ourselves or contracting for ourselves. Yes, use those as motivators to learn more about what makes us healthy, what makes us sick, what uh, boosts our immune system, rather than fighting about whether or not a vaccine is good or not. Let's take a look at how, what are the best ways to shore up our immune system? You know, what are the best ways to uh, to decrease our, our, our allergies to things by examining, you know, for our, uh, our, 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 our gut lining and seeing how inflamed it is from the foods that we're eating? You know, so th these are a lot of, uh, of little things that we could actually do uh, just by uh, being aware and using uh, using whatever uh, positive use stress or negative stress um, that uh, that uh, surround us that, that that are surround us or within us, right? Uh, to actually learn more uh, about what makes us tick and what makes us healthy, right? Amazing. All right. Uh... Any final words of wisdom for the crew? Otherwise, we can wrap things up here and call 2024. It's already done. We've or looked into our crystal ball. It's not vague. It's crystal clear. Uh, we've got a lot of positive things to chat to chat about over the course of the year, it sounds like, whether it's generative AI and us having a podcast no longer with Dr. Ted, but with Dr. Ted, the, uh, the bot, the replica. Um, 
So this might actually be Dr. Ted's last podcast. So, you know, thank you, it's wonderful Dr. Ted. Knowing you, Ted. Yeah, thank it, you for being. It, you know, it's been wonderful knowing you. Um, thank you for your contributions to everything. We look forward <laughs> to uh, indulging your replica in conversations in the new year. Um, but whether it's generative AI replicas or um, agents or um, MDMA assisted therapy, uh, there's a lot to look forward to in 2024. Yeah, no. I thought you were going to end that sentence with, there's one thing you can be sure, that generative AI replica of me is going to say fuck all the time. Once every 3.5 seconds. All right. <laughs> so on that note, everybody have a, a fucking good 2024 and have a wonderful rest of your 2023. Signing off, please stay equanimous. Have a happy new year. See you, everyone.